After months of speeches, campaign stops, and polls, it's finally here. Election Day 2024 and voters across the country headed to the polls to make their voices heard. Let's take a live look at a polling location, this one in Detroit, where we have heard that uh, of lines at several of the spots across Metro Detroit, but it looks like at least at this location, things are moving along smoothly. And that is welcome news for those uh, who are getting ready to vote for the nation's top job, those state races, your local races as well. And we're going to get into all of that starting now. Great to have you alongside on what will most certainly be a day-long journey, likely longer, of Election Day coverage here on Local 4. And there's so much at stake today. And this election, we know, is going to go down in history no matter who wins. Well, it is because if Donald Trump wins, he will be the first president since Grover Cleveland voted out of the White House and then voted back in. If Vice President Kamala Harris wins, she'll be the first ever woman, of course, to be elected president. Well, we have so much to get to this noon. We'll start out with our Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank, out and about today. And I know you're at Huntington Place, which is going to be a very significant location as counting begins. It certainly is, Rhonda Jason, a very different scene here already than what we saw back in 2020. Number one, we're up on the first floor, two levels of security before you even get into this room. Behind me, they've already counted about 85,000 absentee ballots. They expect to get to around 100,000 by 8 o'clock tonight. I want to bring in Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel. Uh, her team, they've been working, we've said, uh, before we even started this interview, more than a year uh, to make sure this was a safe and secure election, despite Despite that, though, I know Detroit police have been looking into some threats. Nothing's been verified. Everything's been checked out and safe. Uh, how concerning is that for you right now? Well, we knew that there was going to be election misinformation and disinformation. And um, that's unfortunate, but it's an effort to scare people away from exercising their fundamental right to vote. And what I'm asking our citizens to do is this. First of all, don't share misinformation or disinformation. Um, if you see something like that, you know, Make sure it's coming from a verified source, but don't be deterred from casting your vote. A lot of us have worked very hard for, as you noted, a long time to make sure that people were going to be safe, both in the process of casting their ballot, counting their votes, um, and making sure that, you know, the will of the people is heard. So it's important that people not fall for efforts to deter them from voting. Because any threat that has been called in has been checked out, it has been safe. Uh, police are, you know, out in the city and throughout the area making sure that everybody has an opportunity to vote safely. Having said all of that, though, we have heard about some election misinformation that's been coming out, correct? Yeah, for instance, we've been seeing some text messages that allegedly are coming from campaigns telling people to cast their ballot tomorrow, tomorrow right. can't vote tomorrow it's too late election day is today yeah. polls close at 8 p.m. although if you are in line at 8 p.m. you'll still have to be allowed to cast your ballot all right well thank you for your time today and for the work that your team and the secretary of state's team has been doing to get us to this point we appreciate it very much of course if you have any issues voting today i want to hear from you directly the help me hank team click on detroit.com we are working to investigate any problems at the polls get in touch with us and we'll take a look at it right now i want to get you out to my colleague erica Eric and she's been talking with voters this morning in Southfield. And Erica, how's the turnout there today? It's, you know, we've seen some pretty good crowds out here. Thank you, Hank. We're at uh, Thompson International Academy here in Southfield. And it doesn't look too crowded, but inside it's pretty packed. And we were out in Detroit earlier, same scene over there. It's where I met a young girl, only five years old. And guess what, you guys? She's already learning how to vote. Take a look. Yeah, Errol was very excited to vote. Obviously, she can't fill out a real ballot, so I let her look at some of the people who are running for different positions on these pamphlets, and then she chooses how to write what she would do if she was a world leader. So, yeah, just getting her excited about the our civic duty to vote. Why is voting important? Because you will have a new president to rule over the stadium. I take her every time I go to vote. Maybe one day someone will be voting for a little arrow here. It's highly <laughs> likely. She <laughs> likes to run things. <laughs> 
Back out here live in Southfield, uh, a lot of relief from people. They're just glad to finally get their votes in. They keep saying their message today is, you know what? There's really no excuse to get your vote counted. Every single one counts. So make sure you can get out today if you haven't voted yet. Reporting live in Southfield, Erica Erickson, Local 4. Back to you. And as they say, voting is easy. <laughs> Erica, definitely is. thank you. And certainly a great teaching lesson for all the kids that may not be of age to vote just yeah. yet. And our chance to also say, Erica, welcome to the team. Yeah, great to have welcome. you aboard. Oh, wonderful. Thank you both. <laughs> As the votes roll in, you will likely be hearing a lot about the importance of the blue wall. That's 18 states and the District of Columbia that the Democrats won in each presidential election from 1992 to 2012. One of those states is Michigan. And who better to break it down than NBC's Steve Kornacki? The whole country obviously going to be watching the results as they come in, in Michigan. What are we going to be watching for as those results come in? Well, obviously, so much of the population in Michigan concentrated in the southeast corner of the state, in and around Wayne County, Oakland County, Macomb County, Washtenaw, where Ann Arbor is. Just those four counties I mentioned are going to make up about 40 percent, maybe more, of all of the votes cast in the state are just going to come from that corner right there. Oakland County, that's the fast growing suburban county democrats have been doing better and better there does that trend continue macomb county trump's carried it twice but his margin came down in 2020 does he get it back up to 2016 levels we're going to be looking a lot in western michigan uh, around grand rapids out in o ottawa county as well used to be a core republican area a core republican region but that's changed in the trump era do democrats continue uh, to make strides there uh, swing county we're going to spend a lot of time talking about I bet is Saginaw County. As Saginaw goes, is that going to be how Michigan goes? Uh, that could be one of those counties you want to watch as a bellwether. And that's just a little bit. We got a lot more. I'm sure we'll be looking at that night. Michigan could be full of surprises and we will all be watching it. There is so much to it. You literally could talk about it for an entire day or in this case for months. Thanks to Steve. And also it's important to remember today the popular vote does not determine the outcome of the election. Of course, all your votes matter, but it's determined by the Electoral College, which is a complicated and confusing process for some people. Here's a breakdown of how it works. State political parties choose their electors. So each state gets the same number of electors as it has members in the House and Senate. A candidate needs a majority, so a candidate, as in the presidential candidate, needs at least 270 electoral votes to win the White House. The Constitution does not require electors to vote for their party's nominee, but they almost always do. And some states require it. Following our newscasts this afternoon and evening, hit us up on Local 4 Plus for our special election coverage all night long. We'll be following all of the races that matter to you in Metro Detroit starting at 8 o'clock. We have a bipartisan panel to weigh in on the results as they come in. Our decision board is up and running to help visually show the trends we see throughout the night. That coverage, as we say, gets underway 8 p.m. on Local 4 Plus and click on Detroit.com. And of course, we do want to hear from you if you run into any issues at your polling places. That's why our Help Me Hank is out and about today. Hopefully everything runs smoothly, but you can reach out to our help desk and provide details about the location and what's happening where you are. You can head to clickondetroit.com or scan that QR code on your screen. That'll take you right to where you can let us know. Well, we got a little taste of how the weather is out there, as we saw from Erica's live shot, and it's clearly breezy, as you said. <laughs> breezy, yeah. but warm. Yeah. Yeah, a warm and windy day, and at least most of the wet weather has stayed away so far this morning and will throughout a good chunk of the afternoon. So we want to make sure you see what you are going to be dealing with this afternoon. We'll jump back here with temperatures real quickly. Uh, as far as downtown Detroit, we're sitting at 73 degrees, Metro at 71. 74 is the sweet spot to tie the record over at Metro Airport, so obviously we're well on our way to getting there. 70 in Ann Arbor, 69 in Pontiac, and 72 in Monroe. So as we look at the wind gusts, we have wind gusts that are awfully close to 40 miles per hour, officially 39 mile per hour gusts clocked at Metro Airport, 33 in Ann Arbor, 34 mile per hour winds down into Adrian. 
32 over at City Airport, so it is breezy out there and those winds are pretty much at the peak hour, or at least for the next few hours, we will have about 35 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts until we get to about eight. Then we start to see them taper off just a hair, but 30 mile per hour wind gusts at that point will stay a little breezy heading into tomorrow. So satellite and radar showing that we do have moisture that's wrapped around that stalled out frontal boundary to our northwest. Once we get this cold front that sweeps through, that rain will move out of here and we have a cooler air mass in place for for tomorrow, but as far as the arrival of the rain, probably not until about eight o'clock or after, and it'll be very light and very scattered, so not a widespread washout. Still forecasting 76 for that afternoon high, which would break the previous record of 74 degrees. We'll have more on the cool down that's ahead and the timing of that rain in just a few minutes. All right, Ashley, thank you. A sad update on a massive fire in Southfield. A 73 year old woman is dead and several others are displaced after this apartment complex in Southfield went up in flames. This was the scene yesterday around 2:15 in the afternoon. It was happening at the Le Chateau apartments right there on Southfield Road. Firefighters and six different departments worked together to try and get this fire under control, but it just was not enough to save it. At least three people sustained minor injuries from smoke inhalation. The cause of this deadly fire is still under investigation. Breaking trade news for the Lions that turned out to be the worst kept secret in the NFL. Yeah, kinda. NFL Network first to report the Lions have landed Browns pass rusher Zadarius Smith. It involves a pick swap and an extra late round pick to the Browns. Smith is in his 10th year and has five and a half sacks this season. He's 32 years old and signed through next season and just reading and noodling around the old internet, uh, the interwebs. Don't be surprised if the Lions might not be done in the uh, trade oh, market today. Well, we've got a few more hours left. 4 p.m. is the deadline. Yeah, they might still be active. All right. We'll see.